Hello, everybody, and welcome to the semifinals of the Spring Fling 2022 Top 8. I'm Michael Hoyp. I'm joined today by Jared Doucette. Say hi, Jared. Hi, Jared. All right. We have a nice early match for our players and our viewers. I know I'm, even though I just kind of rolled out of bed, I'm still very excited to watch this match of Magic. We have the... Uh, Mono Blue Stifle Knot, piloted by Sven Lutz, up against the Phyrexian Devour combo, piloted by Tom Matelski. So we have dubbed this the Battle of Phyrexia to, to make it to the finals of the Spring Fling. And uh, we're going to see which Phyrexian is is better in this matchup. And I'm not exactly sure which, which deck is advantaged. Um, I'm going to be bringing up the deck list for Tom right now, and we can kind of delve in. So the Devourer combo, I'm going to kind of just pass the reins to you, Jared, since this is something that you're pretty intimately familiar with. So what can you tell us about this combo deck? Well, Tom and I worked on this list a little bit recently, and um, I, I mean, can tell you that it's a very consistent deck. It has a lot of redundancy in its win conditions. Um, I mean, you have four Fling, four Alters, you have four Devourers, and four Tinkers, and Tinker is the best card in the deck by far. Um and it should be, like, it can go off as early as turn two uh, with the ideal draw, but it also can um, it more consistently turn three or four. It, it's one of those combo decks that always feels like it's just a card away, and it's all about, you know, it expects to win a lot of game ones, obviously, as most combo decks do. Um, and it has some little bit of, like, kind of stall elements with uh, Tangle Wire and um, <clears throat> and uh, the Fed's great against control decks that, that are pretty good. But it's really hoping to ramp, ramp, ramp and dig, 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 and then to, to find its pieces and do its thing. Um, I think it's... I love the deck. I thought it was a blast to play. Yeah, it's definitely very powerful, and especially if it goes undisrupted, it can just do its thing. And I mean, it has some... Like, a card like Tangle Wire can go um, pretty well against some yeah. decks that are trying to interact on your turn. But yeah, it's very powerful and can win as early as turn two. I will bring up the Mono Blue Stifle Knot list. So this is... I've seen mono blue stifle knot lists like a long time in pre-modern, and I really haven't seen them with a lot of success. I've seen them, I guess, in some of uh, smaller tournaments, I think, over in Europe that I've seen someone piloting. I, I don't remember the name. But uh, it's interesting to see here Sven like take this this and cut a color from what we've traditionally seen. I mean, we've seen stifle knot lists of the blue-white variety, the blue-black the old versions had blue red and of course there's been blue green with with pilots like mike harris and then obviously there's been three color three color decks for a stifle knot so all these different varieties and here we're kind of just going back to a simplistic version with just mono blue and uh it's it seems like it has like all the tools that it needs one thing that really stands out is having access to four foil and four gush gush is like yeah. a super powerful card and uh, foil is a great way to respond to uh, protecting your queen once you put it into play. I guess the other notable thing is there are four wasteland in in this list that most stifle knot lists don't have the luxury of playing. So that that one yeah. could come into play because there are a lot of targets for the the devourer deck. But the the other interaction that's pretty cool is just the the main combo in terms of dreadnought plus stifle slash vision charm. The stifle and vision charm have some interactions with. Uh, the way that Tom is trying to combo if he's using the Altar of Dementia. Uh, if he's yes. trying to sacrifice Phyrexian Devourer to mill out Sven, if he just has one blue mana up and a Stifle, he can Stifle that trigger. Also, if he goes for like a Tinker, uh, he could maybe phase out the, the Altar and get a whole nother turn. Uh, that would only kind of be situational. He'd have to be uh, have a Dreadnought in play and where one more attack is relevant but uh, still something that could come up. Yeah, I, I think you almost got to look at this as like, especially in this matchup, like Sven is the control deck that has like just a monster winner, right? Like the, the Dreadnought is just like the huge winner at the end. And um, so it's it's probably playing a little less tempo than kind of more traditional kind of Stifle Knots that are all in on the combo. Because I think um, overall, especially be, overall, like Tom's going to be faster as a combo deck. So I think it's he's going to have to just sit back and probably play a little bit of control, especially because he only has the one Lotus Petal, which looks so strange in like a Stifle Knot list, mm -hmm. because you probably want to try to get that out turn one usually. But he's got a lot of control elements, like you mentioned, with 
four counter spell, four days, four foil, and like the stifles and the wastelands. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Yeah, it, it will be interesting to see. I mean, stifle that typically is not a deck that does play the control route because usually the twelve twelve is the fastest thing, and it's looking to take like those early games and kind of just back up the like protect it. And well, this matchup here, it's the the role I think might be shifting where. Um, Sven might be a little bit worried about what Tom is doing and then might deploy his 12-12. So we'll see if if the Stifelot list plays any more defensively than maybe the traditional uh, Stifelot list would in most matchups. But I'm excited to jump down to the match and figure out how this plays out. Yep, I, I just sent them the message to get started. Okay, so uh, one thing to note, I will switch Tom's screen around. And uh, we are playing a best of five, so the uh, the higher seed gets a choice to play or draw, and that is Tom. So for the first game, he will be on the play, and then for the remaining games, will be determined on who is winning the prior game. But it looks right. like Sven is putting two cards on the bottom for his mulligan, and I didn't see Tom if he had anything set aside, but... Uh, no, he has seven. Okay. So, the Stifle Knot deck, if, if he thinks he's, he wants to be as fast as possible, can just, you know, keep looking for the combo, right? Yeah, and, for, and this is kind of a matchup. And... Given that the deck lists are open, um, you're yeah. kind of... It's a little bit safer to mulligan. You're not afraid of, like, right. uh, discard spells uh, interacting, or just, like, a Swords of Polishers plucking away the the devour or the dreadnought i'm getting my phyrexians messed up okay but we do see a turn one ancient tomb and then alter dementia and also jeweled amulet so this is setting things up to be that dreaded turn two kill uh, if with a blue source and a tinker um this is oh. yep something well there's there's one untapped blue mana so it's not necessarily yeah. over because uh of the card stifle so okay see what he does um okay mind okay, stone okay so he has access to three mana but none of it is colored but we do have a chromatic oh, sphere i think you still have to respect the um okay so we put the colorless into the amulet okay interesting And I'm gonna guess he says go, yeah. Yeah, defense grid could be a big player in in this matchup that um it could kind of clear the way for Tom. Also, if we get to turn two, Sven has the possibility of both playing like counterspell and foil on the same turn. Uh so uh not necessarily hundred percent safe, but um do you wanna check the chat? I don't know if they're trying to Yeah, I just thought Okay. Um but yeah, Jeweled Amulet is pretty interesting that you're able to put uh, colorless mana into it to get out later. It's a weird card, but I um, <laughs> that, this is back in the day when they were always trying to basically fix the moxes or whatever, or fix other cards and, and trying to find different ways to make them viable. And you know, this is this is their first attempt at a different kind of mox, I guess. I mean, it. it after like it's a lot of words but after you read it it's pretty intuitive it's basically yeah. the mana you put in you're able to get out later so right and you just store it yep. that's all you're doing i mean i think that <laughs> at some point that's kind of how i thought like normal lands worked i would like have yeah. these little tokens that just float mana through the entire time and things would get pretty yeah. crazy if we cast our raw worms on turn three or whatever but <laughs> mm -hmm. great all right, so he's going to get some mana. I'm guessing blue. I still think it's kind of gutsy, like ballsy to try to go for it here. Well, if you don't have... I mean, other than defense grade, it's not like anything like really changes. Like, when does it get better? Um, Sven... I guess it makes Sven keep his mana up, but it's still kind of problematic, I think, to... Okay, so he's going for a second altar. This would protect him against the the phasing idea, but... yeah. All right, I think I think we're just kind of spinning wheels right now. I think we are too. I'm surprised he didn't use the jewel amulet mana because he probably wants to put some colored on that uh, amulet instead for next turn. Well, the 
his sources are all temporary for colored, so it's kind of like, like if he had an island, I think that I'd be more inclined to agree with you. But since he would have to use a chromatic sphere, I guess that you're saying since he didn't use the blue mana on this turn, okay. Yeah, I guess he would have to anticipate not drawing anything, but yeah, okay, that's fair. Yeah, because yeah, you, you definitely feel like he's short on colored, and he's also he's probably just scared of counter spells right now, and, and rightfully so. You, you just assume that he's got. I mean, he's twelve in his deck. I, I don't think days is as much of a concern anymore, but like foil and hard counter are both could just stop your. You go to tinker. That's a two for one. Mm -hmm. Which which is not that big of a deal. You have so many permanents right now. But yeah, foils would be a concern. You really want that defense grid if you're Tom. You feel a lot better with that. Oh, he ports it in himself. How sad. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that's one of your favorite things to do, Mike. Make it for your opponent. Yeah, I uh I I wonder, did we keep track of how many uh, portents were played at LobsterCon? I wish we did. I was just thinking the same thing. I and I was like, like we're finally at a paper tournament where it's actually like pretty reasonable to 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 target. Also, it was kind of funny. There were people sitting next to me, and I don't I don't know if you were there because I sat next to you in a number of the rounds. But they yeah, were resolving right. Urza's bauble, and they were talking about they like, is it like do the player? Do both players know which card is? is revealed is sure. it like, and i'm not actually sure either i told them I'm like just i would ask a judge and i think they just kind of settled on no though i think you do know i think it otherwise it would be Couldn't like it. you would have to look at a card and then put it back face down and like shuffle their cards again and give it back to them but because mistress bobble which is the most more common card is um you know they show it off the top of their deck to their opponent right that's a more mono magic and um that does not let the person who was targeted um know unless you target it yourself so it, it's kind of strange how that how, how that works okay got the oop yeah just put that on top i think it's fine um but yeah i'm not sure i, I it'd be a hard i, I wouldn't know how to do it otherwise basically it yeah it seems it seems hours. difficult to employ otherwise to try and make it that the uh, person doesn't doesn't know what it is okay so we okay, see I, intuition I, foil, I think he's got this intuition gets cast but uh sven has a counter spell and now he has gush to refill his hand so yeah but this devour is coming down outside like outside of um foil which probably is going to happen right here because he's tapped out for for stifle He's got the Mind Stone to pay for days. So if, out. if you have Counterspell and are casting Intuition, would you use it if you don't have any other 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 what any other way to counter? I think you kind of have okay. to let it resolve, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm always, I'm always kind of of the opinion that like don't counter the Intuition, counter the thing that they Intuition for. Well, usually, I can see if you but... have two two different counters that you can play in that turn. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, and he probably already had it. And he, you know, with the gush, he gets the put the islands back in his hand, so it is a pretty comfortable position. So that that was fine for Tom because those were both one for one interactions. You know, as far as the yeah, he wishes they both resolved, but you know, it wasn't like this tinker or he went all in on the combo already and then got blown out. So well, Sven had to use three cards to cast the foil. So right, I mean, so you do you are up that way, but he also got four for gush basically. Yep. So, okay, another amulet. Uh, what are you gonna do with it? I think it's time to cycle this mind stone. I want to draw a card. Oh, I gotta what update you... uh, life, life total of Tom. I had him at sixteen. He's actually at ten. The ancient tombs yeah. are uh, dealing him a lot of damage, though. I guess the the life totals that matter is like, are you at thirteen? Are you at twelve? That's that's yeah. pretty much kind of how I think the biggest the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. we do see a wasteland so it hasn't come down early but it i mean I, yeah i guess that's probably not gonna do like there's no colored mana that would be the thing to go after at this point um and tom has plenty of of colorless mana 
Yeah, I'm wondering when he's going to start tossing these mind stones for card draws. Yeah, I feel like he could definitely get rid of two of them, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, he still has those jeweled amulets as well. That yeah, he can store up those amulets. I think I would like to put a blue on one of those amulets. Well, that, that's not a possibility right now on his board state. So, well, he has the chromatic sphere. He has another sphere that he could. He has a chance to draw three cards at the end of his opponent's turn. Store blue on the other on the second amulet. Oh, he does have a sphere. I was thinking he has three mind stones. Okay, I okay, I missed that. I was. I saw them all in a row, and I was thinking that it was a, a mind stone. Though, if you commit it to blue, is there ever a spot like? Do you think maybe he has like a fling in his hand that he's worried well, about he's not be, being able to cast that? Well, he's going to need two colors anyway. Usually, when you when you go for fling, you're going to need to tinker and fling, or or like I guess also I mean, if he hard casts a devour, again, hey, which you're right, which but. his current state he would does have the ability to do. So, it, though it is a little bit more worrisome to. Like fling in this matchup because there are so many counter spells yeah. that you're spending like a devourer and a bunch of mana. Oh, Here we have good. a tangle wire, so this could be somewhat of a protection against the counter magic from from Sven. So and also Tom's life total, like you said, is getting low, where like it's starting to become annoying with these ancient tombs. Sure. Like you, I mean, yeah, like it's just going to take one swing for devour, no matter what. But he's also going to get to the point where, like, maybe he can't even tap them anywhere because he's going to be a two life. You said devour when you meant dread dot. I wonder how many times yeah, we're yeah, going to yeah. do that over the course of the match. <laughs> I'm the, sure the I've the done Phyrexian, it in the past. Yeah, they're, they're both Phyrexian D's. You know. <laughs> All right, down to six. Second one. Oh, they got a little three. Oh, yep, another tank wire. Okay, that's good. All right, foil still the card that's gonna interrupt him the most. And if we get to pass the next turn, then he Sven does have the option. So if he had like a, a one only one land in hand, he might want to tap out this turn, and then the next turn he'd be able to tap three permanents and then play and then have like blue blue up. I guess he mm -hmm. would be able to. I guess you could just play it. It wouldn't. You don't have to keep it in your hand. Can you see the arts of the islands that Sven has? I don't, Do don't see the arts of the island, and also the arts of his counter spells. They're different so far. Yep. I um, the the one the two tapped in the middle. That's one of my favorite arts. It's from the good ones. starter. It's from Portal. It's, I think it's by Eric Peterson. It's a it's a island I really enjoy playing. It's a good one. All right, we, we go. got Chromatic Sphere is getting cracked. It looks like we're making blue mana, mm -hmm. and the City of Traders has been tapped. Yep, get another one. We'll use that colorless mana to cycle Bide Stowed. He's dug a lot of cards. I can't believe he hasn't seen like an impulse though, you know. Well the he it's possible that he has a card like Impulse, but the problem is that he hasn't seen a consistent source of blue mana. And it might be that he's not willing to cast a card like Impulse because that blue mana is so precious in this current board state. Yep, I agree. Yep, charge it with a blue. No? Okay. Yes, that should be blue mana. Yeah, there you go. Make it easier for everyone. I actually, I need to go to like a game store and just get like a blue, a black, and white, like you know, the dye for the different colors of mana. I but mean, because like, I, I, I otherwise, tried to do it on Amazon, and each one was gonna like I have to buy like sixteen, uh, you know, red, <laughs> you know, blue dice, and I'm like, I don't need sixteen, I need one. You know, you, you could just get like a, a basic island, and then like put the island on play, and then just like put a one on top of it. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. But like but like I but I only use it for true land. I don't play storm, so that's I don't true. Mean, like, you know, yeah. those, those little like ch chart things they got going on. <laughs> a, a mana flow chart kind of thing almost. <laughs> well, like I was watching Connor last night and like he's got like the like the proxy like how the stack works. I'm like, that's amazing, first yeah, of all. Those are really cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but also he has a combo that the most other people haven't seen. Yeah. That's also being a good good like player, right? Or, or a good um a good sport. You're like, I'm showing you this because this is weird. Yeah, I think I 
I don't know what the the intention That's of it. Awesome. Oh, now we have a fell worse on it's a consistent source of blue mana. But um That's huge. Uh yeah, I think also he actually kind of uses it as like mental reminders and mm -hmm. um ways to help him do the combo. So there is a little bit of benefit for him, I think is what he said. But yeah, I I do feel like it's mostly for the opponents or for the people on camera to the viewers at home to understand what's going on. I wonder when um when Sven's gonna fire off this uh wasteland. I at the point how how long the game went, my inclination is he's waiting he would probably use it on something like this Shivan Reef. That he was waiting for to hit a colored source because Tom had so much colored man or colorless mana that it it wouldn't do that much taking out an ancient tomb. Yeah, I might, I might have just like kind of like made it more difficult with um, the city of traders earlier, but I'm just curious. Okay. Oh, here we go. Here comes the dreadnought. Okay. Twelve, twelve employee. Not looking good for Tom. Tom, you got to go off, my friend. Staple. All right. There's the impulse. Okay. I mean, Tom's not out of it. I mean, but I'm guessing those four cards say the word counter on them. At least two of them. Again, you're not too worried about days. You got tons of mana. Conveniently, he's at six, so if he needs all of his mana right now, or in his next turn, he could be at one. You know what I mean? With all the damage he would do himself. Which would be kind of cool. Because he would have done all 19 damage to himself. <laughs> yeah, you, when you play this Devourer combo deck, you you really live or die by the Ancient Tombs. You know, and it's just it's really unfortunate against a deck like Sly, where you do yourself, like, you know, four to six. You're like, wow, I just made this a lot. It, it just did... 20 to 30 percent of the work for you yeah and that that usually adds up to a, a turn that you would have had against a lot of other matchups that you don't against a deck yep. like sly Ooh, yes okay sorry um, <laughs> we were talking about no no commentator bias here but jared jared has uh like he said you worked with tom a lot and you've played this deck a lot so mm -hmm. We've been discussing it, but I, I just like it. It's just fun. I'm not a combo player, like, typically. I like this, you know, go back and forth creatures, as a lot of people know. But, you know, it is, I, it was, like, the first time, like, really digging into a combo deck. And it was fun to, like, just kind of, you know, sometimes have some, you know, like, I win, you know? I kind of feel and like Devourer is the bad the bad guy in this matchup. But we do have a Daze. I don't know if this is going to really impact anything, but I guess given that Sven does not have three mana, if this defense card were to resolve... He's not gonna be able to use it anyway, so um, I think Tom, you got to pay for it with amulet. Wait. What is he doing? Okay, we have a disrupt. Oh, so we are dazing the defense grid, but then um casting the disrupt. draw card. Yes. So this is a probably to dig for a foil. <clears throat> Yeah, I have to imagine. Well, even if you have a foil for the defense card, that kind of doesn't matter this turn. So I don't know what or this... Gush. Okay, so there's a foil. But I mean, like at this point, he doesn't have enough cards. Unless he had Gush as his last card, and he's going to Gush into another foil. Yeah, I mean, that's possible. Let's see what you got. Yep, still going for it. All right, Tinker will sacrifice the Jewel Dam let away, and given that there's a defense card in play, I think this means that the shields are down for Sven, and I think Tom is going to take this. Now that, like, the way that we saw it end, I don't know. Do you think that Tom was, like, looking for a defense card that entire time? That's my guess. And That's that he, wa guess. he wasn't willing to, to combo? I mean, he kind of did some, like, bait spells at some point, but... Um... We also got to make sure he's got enough cards that's left in his deck, too, to make this happen. He should. Yeah, the game has yeah. gone for a little bit, and Sven has cast, like, a gush. So you probably only need, like, 47 cards, but... Yeah. 
I guess this might be the hardest part of the deck is like doing the quick math and like trying to be <laughs> add the <laughs> that, that, that's a lie. And then there's other hard parts about about like when to go for it, like we just saw. It. But like sometimes you're just like, okay, I gotta add my ones, twos, and threes, and also the devourer comes down. It's like add six. You're like, wait, how does that work? You know, <laughs> just kind of do it in your mind. Yeah, for anyone who has not seen this combo, so what's happening right now is the Fire Exine Devourer is in play. Uh, you start exiling cards. There is a trigger once it has power 7 or greater, but you're still able to respond to that. And so Tom is responding to that initial sacrifice trigger and building up the power of Devourer into the point where its power is greater than or equal to the number of cards in Sven's deck, and then he's sacrificing it to Altar of Dementia. Actually, he used the fling that Okay, so he had the fling. Get a fling his hand. Um, so, yeah, fling. Even more exciting for the spring fling, for the fling to be cast. So, Yeah, the, the fling's nice because it's um because it doesn't take your entire deck, which is sometimes relevant. And also, like, you know, uh, Guy's Blessing is one of the things that just stops you in, like, if, not in this matchup, obviously, but in other matchups, which is really annoying when you try to build with opponent. All right, so the second game, Sven is going to be on the play. We're still going to be with outside boards. And, I mean, he was kind of down from the start with, in terms of resources. We did see him mulligan a five. We didn't see that quick dreadnought. I guess there's always a little bit of fear if your devourer opponent keeps their initial seven, that you're more worried about finding interaction pieces in terms of counterspell dazes and foils than you are trying to set up your own combo because they are faster than you. So uh, we'll see if maybe maybe being on the play, he can mulligan more aggressively for like a turn two Dreadnought and then yep. try and be the aggressor in this match or in this game. Without the, like I said, without only the one Lotus Petal, like you can't try for the turn one Dreadnought and hope to win by turn three. Mm -hmm. It just, it's just dealing up the one. Like that, that's really going all in. Whereas most other versions of Dreadnought have fall four. And so you can kind of like think for that sometimes but though one one advantage would be like if you have a hand that involves wasteland on the so you still would cast the dreadnought on turn two and so then tom would spend his turn two on your turn three you attack and then you use the wasteland which is probably enough in most situations to... i would say that would be yeah yeah if, if, if he if he can have a five card hand of like island wasteland you know stifled dreadnought and called days or counterspell like or even second wasteland would be amazing you know that that would be like his ideal hand because the wastelands will do good work when i i played this deck at lobster con uh, the devourer con or corn pops excuse me and you guys start calling it corn pops um <clears throat> but it, it it definitely um can die to some wastelands i got wastelanded by um michael simpson in round five that Led, led to me like he was on goblins and I just the wheels fell off on the double wasteland. I was like, well, he he like turned one lackey, lackey into siege gang and double wasteland on me. I was like, well, we'll, we'll shit, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to take a game. Yeah, exactly. All right, players are shuffling up. I think I wasn't paying close attention, but I think Sven is mulliganing. Yeah, he's mulliganing at least once. Oh, yeah, update my match score. I just got a bunch of my uh, my post lobster con um, ma mail orders in, you know, some really random stuff. Like I picked up the future sites from BK's uh, War Angels to make Angel Face deck, and because uh, I only had like one for the cube, so I was like, okay, they're cheap. Yeah. And I also pick I also picked up my third Sil Sylphan Safekeeper because you know Flint showed that doing some good work this weekend. Yeah, that card Polar. definitely seemed like an all star for him. So. Oh, so good. <laughs> um. It's just like it's perfect for that for that kind of combo, right? When you have a creature based combo, it's perfect for it. However, the one one of the mistakes I made last week was not getting Olorade to sign my Sylvan Sylvan Safekeepers. Yeah, I I looked at the booth after I played him, and uh, Flint and I were talking to him at some point, and I was talking about getting a signature, but I couldn't find one from the booth, so it'll have to be, wait for the the next time that I see them see him. Yeah. So. 
Because I'm not a huge, like, big signature person in terms of artists, but I do think it's pretty cool with the, the invitational cards when it's, like, representing a, a player to, to get their signature I, I, on it. I made the mistake again. I played, I met John Finkel a couple of years ago, and I had, like, you know, should have brought my Shadow Mage Infiltrators, and I missed that, you know? I just, I think I met Darwin Castle, like, in the, the mid-2000s. I could have had him sign my Avalanche Riders. I mean, it is really cool, you know, to have that happen. Yeah. And you're right. I, I, I don't mind SIGs. I, th my thing with signatures is I, I prefer, I, I like to be there, like, talking to the artist and do it, you know what I mean? As opposed to, like, sending out for him or whatever. Sure. I, yeah, I, I think it's more of a story. Like, you're like, oh, I had to sign at LobsterCon when I met, you know, when I met Brian Weckwitz or Kevin Meyer Jr. or whatever. And most most of the artists, some of their, I think, signatures are more aesthetically pleasing than others. And most of them, I think, do look yeah. pretty good. I guess when you're just talking to, like, um, like a magic player, it's probably a little less likely that their signature is going to look as cool as, like, one of the artists. Right. But uh, still, that, that story of you meeting them is, is kind of worth it. So, I, I really like my signature, like, when I'm signing a check or whatever. I think I have a good one because I got the double T's at the end of Thunder Cross. Okay. But um, I, I've never really practiced on a magic card, so I'd have to, like, condense it a little bit. So, you know, if anyone wants my signature on, like, their whatever, I don't care. <laughs> I don't know if I have a card that's signaturely me, but and I definitely don't have an invitational win. Yeah. Believe me, if I, if I had a chance to design a magic card, I'd have a lot of fun doing it, though. <laughs> it, it, it would probably be red. Spoiler alert. <laughs> All right, two cards go to the bottom for Sven, so it looks like he's ready to start things off again with a five-card hand. We'll see if being on the play can maybe allow him to be a little bit more aggressive. He's just going to start with an island and a portent. He's going to target yeah. himself. One, two, three. Yeah. And, okay. Cards go back on top, and... Oh, no, no. That portent one on the bottom. Hold on. Okay. I definitely saw that there. Do you want to let him know? He put the portent on his, the bottom of his library instead of his graveyard. Like, there's no portent in his graveyard right now. It's just the bottom card of his library. Oh, yeah. Uh, guys. Hey. Well... They'll, I mean, they should be able to resolve that later. I mean, just as well, if he does, he have any shuffle effects where this is going to matter? Um, it might matter for billing. I mean, that extra card, like, if it's, yeah, if it's one extra. So, um, all right, as the players are going to figure th figure this out. Yeah, it should just be the yeah the bottom card. And that goes in the graveyard. Okay, um, now we should be able to continue. Good catch, Michael. I was just watching because the first time when someone in the chat had mentioned about cards going to the bottom after important, and I'm like, I was not paying attention enough, and so this time I was watching to see see what happened. So, All right, well, that's a game rules violation. It would be a <laughs> yeah, so. It's kind of like it, it got crossed with impulse or something like we're putting it on the bottom of the library or something. Okay, we do have a turn. Oh, we have a, huge. a defense grid huge coming defense into play, grid. and yeah, that this one. We had two defense grids. Yeah, the I, first I one. The first one got dazed. Counter. So yeah, that's gonna be a big deal. I mean, Tom feels like invincible now, right? He's just like, I am the greatest in all the land. And he just, especially when um, Sven only has one land going on. Well, so if got... Tom doesn't do anything quickly, Sven would be able to get to three mana and then have uh, foil available. Because, mm -hmm. uh, again, defense grid, like, while it, it does feel a lot of times like you are invincible, uh, you can pay three mana to cast a spell, so... But yes, I would agree that Tom is feeling much more comfortable given the situation. Like I said, invincible. More comfortable is basically <laughs> invincible. And and this uh, basic islands in Tom's deck, th there were so many times I like was so excited to draw that basic island when we played when I played this deck. It just was you really needed it, but also you need so many other things there for the deck. 
that it is kind of like you want to play more basics, but or more less you know painful sources, but you really can't afford to do much more than what you have. All right, I think we're just a tinker away, or even a man, a mana in a playing a hard casting devourer away. Maybe he doesn't have it yet. I was gonna say he's, if he's thinking about something, it's the coast is clear um, for for Tom's perspective. So we are going to be intuition. It probably. I guess is. intuition would be a tricky card because if you got like three tinkers, like you don't you. I guess you wouldn't. You'd be able to tinker away the chromax here. Never mind. So yeah, you're fine with that. Okay, we have it. A tangle wire coming into play, so that, I maybe that was the card he's considering of how effective is this at slowing slowing Sven down. Given that he only has one permanent, so yeah. Most importantly, it keeps keeps him off of dreadnoughting for the next three turns, right? Like that's the way that like Sven can get back in this game. Sure, is if he just puts down the combo and it just swings once, because. Tom's still, I mean, he's got plenty of permanents to tap that this won't interrupt his mana flow at all. Um, but he wants more cards to dig right now, that's for sure. Yep, three tinkers. Three tinkers, and then next turn, the game's over. Unless he has a blue source right now, and then he can just do it. Yeah. What? What I like about this Devourer deck is that, like, Tinker is definitely one of those cards that, like, people have, like, we know how good it is, but, like, it never really found a home in pre-modern, considering mm -hmm. how good it is. And this gave it, this give, gives it its best home, right? It's doing its most powerful thing in this format, in this deck, because it's, you know, the wind con, as opposed to, you know, you're not getting Blight Steel Colossus or whatever, you know, it's just, you're getting Corexian Colossus, which is, you know, fine. I mean, it's a big dude, but... You know, it's not nearly as impressive as an 11-11 trample or indestructible, whatever nonsense happens now, you know, with infect and double strike and, you know. Okay, so back up after you win. The, now that Tom is up two games, now we're going to the third game, so sideboards come into play. I'm going yep. to bring up the mono blue stifle knot list to see what we have. We have three annuls. Those cards seem yeah, very, very good. Those very are the good. standout. Are you... Is Hydroblast a thing? I mean, I guess... No. I don't know how many... I guess there aren't Pyroblasts out of the sideboard of Tom, are there? Because it's it's just no. hard, too hard to have an extra red. Um, is Boomerang a card that you're ever interested in? I mean, let's see. It's one you consider. I mean, Anul is a snap, like, you know, you gotta put in. Yeah. I think Powder... Like, another card, quickly, to talk about Powder Keg might be just too slow um, to try to disrupt the... Uh, the artifacts because you can you if you can get it up to two then like you know that wipes out a lot of the artifacts between defense grid and because it is an answer to defense grid defense grid and you know those the mana rocks um those are something to think about but i, I would think that those you put those in after like you know everything else um yeah the cards that i would be considering cutting from sven possibly winter orb i think that dazes maybe but it, it feels also like kind of scary to cut your dazes Maybe the disrupt, but yeah, I think I would just look to bring in the three annul, maybe the powder keg, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah, let's see. Well, winter orbs, interesting, like you said. Um, let's slow him down a little. He's got a lot of a fair amount of artifact mana. It's hard to say. I'm gonna bring up the the list for the devourer deck. So yeah. we have an additional defense grid, which I have to imagine is coming in. This yeah. is actually a matchup where. Given the deck lists are open, that I don't know if you need to bring in rushing or are there any like no. there's it's probably a um, a weird feeling for Tom that I, most of the time I feel like when you play this devour combo deck you always need to bring in rushing or her. but I think given that right. the deck lists are open you kind of know there's I mean I'm trying to think is there any there's no like one haymaker that prevents him from going off is there no I, I, no there isn't it's not like you know you're worried about engineered plague or ivory mask or you know, something like that, right? Or of silence, or, or 
or what have you. I mean, yeah, this this might be the one one of the few matchups where you just kind of leave those Russian rivers on the board because otherwise you're almost always bringing them in. So um, Pietro had asked, "Is Goblin Welder something that you're bringing here?" Like it, I it's because it's good against like counter magic. Like if there's spending counter magic to counter a, dev a Phyrexian Devourer or a defense card or something that you're able to just put it back into play. I can see that because yeah. especially because the the blue deck doesn't have many ways to remove a one one. It's or anyways. Uh, so I could see Goblin Welder coming in. It, it just kind of makes your important cards much more resilient. Again, this is going to be a case of what comes out. Mm -hmm. um, so. I, I, I guess maybe you could shave like uh, an altar, a devourer, and something else in order to bring in the welders. Well, what if you like, took a? Are, are you ever cutting a card like um, Tangle Wire? Like if because if, if you think of it in a sense of Tangle Wire helps you resolve spells, so does Goblin Welder. That like you could kind of yeah. take the place there and um, play a little bit longer game. It'll be interesting to see, and then maybe we can ask Tom after the match. Yeah. Because this is this is kind of an interesting case where you know there's no engineered plagues or null rods or something coming in and and decklists are open so you I mean that is something you know so it kind of leaves because otherwise I think in the dark you might just have to bring in a, some number of rushing rivers just so you don't lose to a card like null rod that they that you hope your opponent doesn't have um, so the open decklist is kind of interesting here I agree. Help them make a resolve mulligans. Okay. If they need to. Well, um, you can also let them know they can begin whenever. I because I, I don't know if you let them know that they can resolve mulligans is kind of implying that they can't start. So. Okay. I wasn't sure how much more time I needed, but I think. Yep. I'm go. I'm ready to go. With just this. Um. There. I'm ready to see more action, but uh, it's kind of. I did feel like that Sven had the tools to to kind of interact with Tom. But. The, the lack of an early Phyrexian Dreadnought has kind of put him in a difficult position that Tom's kind of had the time to put himself in a position where he's able to resolve his spells. So Sven's down two games. I feel like, like, I didn't think this matchup would go 3-0. But, um... He needs one more card there. That's only six no, cards. He, he's so. mulliganed. Oh, oh, you say, yeah, because London, Mul London Mulligan, yeah. Maybe some old habits are... <laughs> We we we're back, we're back to the you know two thousand and six right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it it seems like it it's kind of scary the thought that you have to beat the devourer combo three three more times to win a match because you feel like at some point they're just kind of assemble their pieces uh, in an early turn before you're able to kind of defend yourself. But the, I mean, co combo like typically loses to control, right? And so like this is why the domain deck defense grids are actually make sense. So because you that's what you would lose to is counter spells probably there are definitely some combo decks i've played that are very good against control decks uh yeah so like there are there are storm lists that i play that are very good and then i when i played the heartbeat or well the mana flare combo that one actually had a pretty good uh control matchup all right good he's stored he's stored a blue that little amulet's kind of sweet I'm not sure. It's definitely not. I don't think it's underplayed because I think it's good in like this deck because it's zero mana and also it helps out those guys. Kind of, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's also nice that you get like the added benefit of it's a card to like tinker away when other decks. Perfect. Yeah, you use the mana you get from it and then tinker it away for free, you know. Also, the other thing with this Devourer combo deck, you can keep a lot of hands. Like a lot of hands look pretty damn good. Like, you know, they might not be the turn two win hands, but you're like. I have like decent mana, and I have a bunch of stuff to play that you know draws more cards. So okay. like, I feel like you, you keep a lot of hands, which just always feels good to be able to keep seven. Oh man, I don't even want to think how many times I've yawned in this this com in this match already. I feel like I'm just every every so often I'm just yawning. So apologies for all the people at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had the. Um... I, I, I'm, I'm not functional until like a big like you know jug of water so okay. I need to clear out the throat and I'm just like coughing it up. That will be my next I, emote is when I get more done to get a, a little goat yawning so that everyone can spam it in chat every time that I yawn. We do have an impulse <laughs> getting cast so Tom is uh, able to have blue mana at a low cost. He doesn't have any soul lands right now. I guess Crystal Vein does a good job of doing yeah. that. 
but um he's kind of trying to set up shop and find find the cards that he needs whether it's the protection in a card like defense grid or if he's just looking for actual combo pieces we do see a tangle wire getting cast why would you tap that city of brass uh potentially he could uh, cast intuition at the end of turn by sacking the crystal vein that's the i guess he wouldn't need to because there's the felwer stone I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I, I agree your life total doesn't matter much, but that seems like a point of damage. You didn't need. Oh, wait, hold on. There must be something. I mean, if you're going to tap it anyway, then I guess. Okay. But I'm guessing he's not going to. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Tinker. Do you put just put a Devourer in play, or do you put a Defense Grade? Oh, there's a Daze. All right. Never mind. guess we don't need to... That might have been a little risky there, Todd, but he feels like he feels good up two games none, right? And I don't know if he. Well, I guess you might think that some of the dazes are coming out, and I, yeah, because dazes is a, like I don't feel bad about like getting the first spell counter spell and then like going for it, but it's one yeah. when it's like days like a card that can be played around more easily just with time. Uh, that one well, feels a little been... a little bit bad, but. To, to play around it, he could have, in theory, sacked the um, crystal vein. The crystal vein, which is bold. I mean, to 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 play around it there, especially because I think he did have two blue up. Like you, you would just. I don't know. That was tough. But we saw the efficiency of the null right there. That was pretty good. Yeah. All right. We have important. Just okay. Targeting Sven, so he'll look at the top three. He'll put it in his graveyard this time. Hopefully. <laughs> oh, those went to the bottom. Is he shuffling? Hold on. Wait, Hold. he needs to shuffle. Hold on. This is an impulse. No. Sven. You the... need to shuffle. Hold on. Well, because the, the cards went to the bottom instead of the top. Well, that's not how it works. Yeah, yeah. It's an impulse. Let's just let him know. So I, at this point, I think he's got to put that card back and shuffle and then draw. So players are going to be discussing important and kind of what just happened. So I'm sure they're going to resolve this, but. Yeah, I do know chat was saying that they thought something like that happened in game one, but I had not seen it, so. If they are need to chat with us, I think I can. Did he draw the card? He did draw the card. That's annoying. Um... All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna just step in just so I can communicate with the players. I think it's it's gonna go a lot quicker if if I can just speak with them real quick. So I'm gonna put the the be right back screen on real quick, and I'm going to chat with the players. Yeah.
yeah we just did okay so uh what what has happened is portent had resolved the cards were put on the bottom um since that is not you either need to put them on the top or they need to shuffle and then spend to draw a card so the the ruling that i made was that given that there's no way to verify which was the actual card he drew from a i mean it, his deck was mostly random but it technically wasn't completely random um Sven had to reveal his hand, and then Tom's able to pick one card to go to the bottom, and now he's going to shuffle and draw a random card. Uh, so that was kind of uh, to adjust for not resolving it properly and not having a completely random card like it should have been. So uh, the, the I didn't see which card that he put on the bottom, did you? Uh, one of the counter spells. Okay. So yeah, we see a hand of counter spell, vision charm, foil, stifle, and lotus petal. So. Right, and you said Sven will draw a card, right? Yes, yes, he still will, he'll still draw a card. Yeah. Yep. All right. This makes me just want to like go to like judge school, you know, just 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 to learn like what 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 to do and how to resolve these mistake situations. Well, so just... uh, the one thing that I, I'm not a hundred percent sure is given that like that was what would happen if it would just be you drew drew a card like inadvertently or something, but the the way it was because it the difference of like the difference he made was basically three cards were were not random when they should have been and mm -hmm. if i don't know if that's exactly how it would work in a, a paper tournament today but um it does in some some ways seem like a, a price to pay but i mean i guess that's part of um playing the cards that you uh got to do what they say so i think he was saying he was getting mixed up with impulse so right something we can understand and relate to but yep mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish Portent would put it on the bottom. That'd be awesome. Okay, back to the action. Defense grid's in. That's going to draw the counter spell. Okay. Yep. Is there a Goblin Welder coming down? Maybe we're going to tinker again? Would you just yeah. go get a Devourer? Or would you get a Defense Grid here? I mean, depends what's in his hand, I guess. If he has fling in hand, he just goes for it. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't thinking about combo. I was thinking that you might I mean, need to this, like pass this the turn. One of the yeah. unfortunate parts of you know the way we resolve that is like now that Tom has almost perfect information about what to play around. Like, this is definitely a hugely beneficial to Tom's mm -hmm. you know combo plan, um, which is unfortunate. But I mean, Sven did you know resolve that card incorrectly. We I mean, I think that's your sequence it. would be very similar, even if it were in the dark. Like you're gonna cast your defense grid, and so. And that gets countered, and then he's tapped out. So looks like Tom is going for the. the yeah, I I mean it. I guess yeah, I, it won't be an altar because yeah, you can't cast it instant speed. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, as long if that last card that we don't know is gush or an island, then otherwise it feels like. Um, oh, he's playing around days. By psychic sacrificing that, so fling it. And that'll do it. Okay, yep. that's it. So another three zero in the the semifinals that will give Tom the win, and we will see the mm -hmm. the Phyrexian Devourer win the the battle of Phyrexia, and it will be enough for Tom to advance to the finals of the Spring Fling, where he'll face uh, Connor Everett Brown on the Turtle Splash deck. So we've got all combo in the in the finals of the Spring Fling. There's definitely going to be a combo Com deck that's going to Com win. Combo Spring. Isn't yes. It? Yes. <laughs> All right, I'm going to jump down to the players. We can listen in yeah. to them and maybe figure out how they sideboarded and kind of what they thought yeah. about the matchup. Yeah. Unmute us, please. Oh, we unmuted you guys. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. Yep, I just yeah. unmuted you as well. So we're just kind of watching to see how the sideboarding went and then uh, maybe what your guys' impressions were for this matchup, how it was going to play out, because uh, I that was not exactly how, how I thought it was going to happen, so... Me either. Well, so Tom, <laughs> you brought in a rushing river. What would you what you bring it in for? We were just kind of curious. Uh, so I think it's better. So this has to come in. Um, Obviously, yeah. Yeah, I think the fourth of ours just usually a cut card anyway. It was just rushing river to um, like in in a pinch if it's there for the for a dreadnought, but it's mm -hmm. not it's not that good. So I just like it's probably better than one amulet. 
Okay. Yeah, I could see that. You know, it might, it might be the play the tempo that you need against like a if he did resolve an early dreadnought. Yeah, it was um, just like a possibility, but tip like I, I think that might be right, but that was definitely it was definitely this, and then I was like, it's probably just better with one rushing river in case. Mm -hmm. I can see that. And for for Sven, we were pretty sure that it was an easy decision to bring in the annuls, and the, the boomerang was the other card we talked about, and taking out the disrupt in the winter orb. So, huh, Mike, we did pretty good. <laughs> All right, that's good because there's definitely times that I like talk about sideboard plan and it, it doesn't happen at, at at all what I say. So. Well, um, yeah, I think uh, I I thought that was going to be a little more difficult, or, or not difficult, but like you know, you know, I thought there was going to be a little more back and forth. But like with all the counter spells of Sven, you know, it's going to make it a little hard. But those main deck defense grids we saw in game two made a made a big difference, right? You know that that that's that's a huge benefit to basically be pre sideboard for control. Definitely, um, yeah, I thought uh, I mean, he did mull to five twice, so that yeah. definitely put a like a like hindrance on his plan, but um, yeah, maybe I think Devourers just got some weird interactions where the Stifle not like struggled. I guess I get played out a little differently than I expected, um, but like it's just like all the mana rocks and getting head on mana, like it kills the dazes and um, Tangawar's rough, like def obviously defense grid, um, so. Yeah, but I think if they get early stifle, not it's difficult for devour. Like he's got to have an early, early kill. Yeah, because you're going to probably do the eight damage to yourself, so it only needs like one swing. Exactly. Like, like game, game one, you ended at one life or whatever. So yeah. Sven, what were you looking for in an opening hand? Were you looking for more controller, or are you trying to get the uh, dreadnought going? Yeah, that that's a good question, actually. Um, so. When I'm on the play in this matchup, I thought I would just try to go for the combo myself real quick and hope for some for some disruption in my hand still. Um, well, yeah, as as Tom said, both my both my starting hands weren't quite optimal, and I wasn't right. confident enough to go down to four because in some matchups you can actually try to play it with four cards only. But in this matchup, I just need a little bit more and just try to be a controlled player or some sort of. It, it it just didn't turn out. It was just mm -hmm. hands without mana and uh, hands with um, you know two or three gushes and things like that. So yeah, because you didn't you didn't cast a dreadnought those. that entire match, did you? No, he did. He did one. I, I, okay. In game one, in game oh, one. Okay. Um, but it, it it didn't get a chance to attack. Okay. Yeah. But but of course, I mean that's just the way that Tom played the matchup really correctly, right? Because um, the difference between our two decks, they both or my deck kind of works like a combo deck as well, but Tom's deck wins when the combo resolves. Mm -hmm. And my deck doesn't win when the combo resolves. And right. Tom played to exactly that difference, right? Um, you can't just wait until the Dreadnought is on board and threatens lethal and then try to go for it with all your thousand manas and defense grid that I have to counter anyway. So um, yeah, that's just, that. I, I think that played out quite quite interestingly in how it, how it should, I guess. Mm -hmm. I agree. Good. Ooh, okay, it's early. <laughs> I think I'm almost awake, though. Yeah, like th yeah. those games. Those games were interesting. There were definitely a lot of spots where it's hard to tell exactly what Tom's plan is. Given we can't see the cards in his hand, but um, it seemed like you the first game you didn't have colored mana for a long time, and we didn't know if the combo was in your hand for the longest time, and you were looking for a defense grid, or if you were just kind of not able to cast like cards like impulse because you didn't want to use colored mana on a card like impulse that you're saving it for tinker uh so do you remember what the situation was for game one tom yeah yeah i think i had everything set but i was just like playing tight and waiting for defense grid okay or, or, or an opening where he would go for the siphon knot and like basically tap out or like because i was like our right, days is not going to do anything it's only the foil but like, i think game one i went exactly. for it and he had the foil and i was like all right i kind of have to just like regroup and go for it yeah mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it was. I I, I, I thought Stifle Knot was actually favored, but I mean the Mulligan definitely. I don't know, but it's it's. I don't know the way when it played out though. Even though he had a mold of five, it seems like it's a pretty close matchup. Like he, like Sven mentioned, like he's got to be like he has to counter defense grid. If he doesn't counter defense grid, like he can't then win his next turn. He has the combo anyway, so it's like he knows to, I'm catching defense grid when I'm probably going to win next turn sure. or that turn. So like he has to counter it. Yeah, and like we talked about, even if he draws like too many stifles, that that's a card that 
interacts well enough with you, like with the the altar of dementia, uh, half of the combo. So it could make things difficult for you if you don't have like a card like defense card in play. So yeah, right. but also that's that's kind of a difficult spot for my deck because Dace doesn't do that much against a deck with so many mana rocks as we've right. seen in a couple of games. But then I have to keep my Daces in four of them because um, I Tom can play uh, defense grid on turn one easily. Mm -hmm. So when I'm on the play, I have to hope for either anal but i only have three so i just need all four daces uh, as we've seen in game three it kind of worked out that way so i have to keep in the daces because an early defense grid just shuts me out completely um but in the late game they just do nothing i can just pitch them to foil over yeah i was gonna say that that's the 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 old force will say that they're saying yeah you can pitch it to to foil in our case so but yeah, yeah. So I was thinking that like there, yeah, there might have been like a slight edge to the the mono blue stifle knot, but um, the the defense grids really showed up and really carried a lot of weight in this matchup and um, really provided a lot of opportunities, Tom, to for you to execute your game plan. So uh, it was cool to see you kind of have the patience to to find it in some of the matches, and then some of the games you just you just had it early, and so that's uh, unfortunate for Sven, but it was pretty cool to to see come to fruition. So. Yeah, it was Sven. Good plan. Um, yeah. How many viewers were there just thinking about everyone probably sleeping? In I don't know. There's around 16 right now is what I'm showing. So a, okay. a little less than maybe what I might normally have. But um, uh, yeah, I'm guessing it's with a lot of the, the U.S. asleep that, that that's fair yeah. and reasonable. So. It seems like it seems like a dad duties are a calling Tom. So. <laughs> um. <laughs> right. so maybe it's time to sign off and move on. Okay. Um, but Sven, uh, is there there anything that you wanted uh, to say before before we head out? Uh, GG, Tom. Thanks for the games. Yeah. Yes, Sven, thanks guys. Mighty, for everything else. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to both of you, and uh, well done. Sven, I really like the the mono blue list. So hopefully other people are gonna pick it up. I know Roland Chang was playing a mono blue stifle knot at LobsterCon, so I'm guessing he might have been influenced by your list. Uh, so it's cool to see the the mono blue stifle knot variety, and uh, it was fun to watch you play. So uh, thanks for playing in the tournament, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. All right, Jared. I'll bring up our schedule. We have our final set. As the the Firexine Devourer in Tom Matelski's hand will advance, and then the Turtle Splash deck in Connor Abbott Brown's hands will be uh, battling out. Uh, we'll have to figure out when that will be scheduled. I will let everyone know. Obviously, I will be streaming that as well. Um, mm -hmm. But what are you looking forward to in that that matchup, Jared? Two ships passing in the night, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of interaction. It's two combo decks seeing who could do the, their thing the first, uh, fastest and, and the earliest. Um, I mean, I'm curious to, you know, I, every time I just like watching the Turtle Splash deck because I feel like I'll learn more about it every time I watch it because it's not a common matchup, even though I've known the deck has existed for months now. Um, but it's def but to see it in, in Connor's, actually, to see both these decks in these two guys' hands is pretty good because they. They both know the decks very their decks very well, so I think it's going to be probably a, a, a blisteringly fast uh, fast race in that matchup. Yeah, it. I was very surprised at the speed and consistency of the Turtle Splash deck the last match, and so we'll see if that can hold up. But I mean, the other thing to note is there are cards like Duress and Cabal Therapy out of the Turtle Splash deck, so that's true. Uh, that can go a pretty long way against the Devourer deck a lot of times. And if like, mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem like the the Turtle Splash deck needs that much time to actually combo off so um we could have a, a blistering fast one <laughs> again so uh we will um look forward to to broadcasting that finals and crowning a 2022 spring fling champion so stay tuned and i will keep you posted on when that match is going to go up but uh i guess i will just take this moment to thank everyone who was able to to tune in this morning uh thank you jared for jumping to the booth um, no I was a little, little worried because I know um, the time zone for me is it's difficult to to find people. So thank you for waking up on your Sunday morning to to join. Hey, you woke up. You woke up even earlier than me. Yeah, you, you got another hour behind me. So this was yeah. seven a.m. for me, and it was six a.m. for you. So yep. But time to make breakfast. <laughs> yes. So now I'm up at Adam, and so I have a volleyball tournament to play today. So I'm looking forward uh, to that. So okay. 
All right. Well, thank you everyone for, for watching for the live viewers and thank you for all the subscribers and all the support I get there. Um, but until next time, take care. Bye-bye.